previously on the backlog. But thankfully, I got a cheat code. I beat the system! I got all the things! Hey everyone. No way. I can't wait for Civil War. I need a fix. There's no more Spider-Man to watch. There's Spider-Man games, aren't there? Video games, like, the kind I put on this show, but which ones do I have? Web of Shadows. Switch freely between Red Suit and Black Suit? Side with heroes or villains? I think I found my Spider-Man game. Welcome back to the backlog. As you guys can see, I have redecorated a little bit. I, I think that it's better with posters here. There's a lot more up there. Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes, as he is for many other people. He's relatable, he's entertaining, and he carries the strong message of with great power comes great responsibility. And with great popularity comes great opportunity for spin-off media outside of just comic books, including TV shows, movies, and, of course, video games. However, much like with anything else, Spider-Man falls victim to Sturgeon's Law, which basically states that 90% of any and all things are pure and utter crap. So where does Spider-Man Web of Shadows land on that extremely narrow spectrum? Honestly, it's kind of hard to say. Developed by Shaba and published by Activision, Spider-Man Web of Shadows was released in October 2008 for multiple platforms, a good chunk of which actually got a completely different version of the game for technical reasons. It was over a year since Spider-Man 3 was out in theaters, and one can only assume that Web of Shadows was being made to capitalize on that movie, because one of the main selling points of the game is that you can switch between Spider-Man's red and black suits seamlessly at any time. But I'll come back to that later. Like with Dead Space, I'll be taking a look at the PlayStation 3 version of Web of Shadows. Keep in mind that in the first few years of the PS3's life, multiplats that came to the console were noticeably buggier than their 360 counterparts. So with that said, let's take a look at Spider-Man Web of Shadows, the PlayStation 3 version. The game starts in media res, showing us events from the end of the story first with Spider-Man in the midst of what can only be called a war zone, fighting off symbiote creatures spawned from Venom alongside S.H.I.E.L.D. Cut to the beginning of the story, and it turns out that in a recent encounter with Venom, Spidey absorbs a bit of the Venom symbiote and regains the black suit. From there, you perform the web head superhero duties, cleaning up crime, but soon you learn that the citizens of NYC are being infected by the Venom symbiote and are going crazy. Eventually, S.H.I.E.L.D. is called in, Wolverine shows up, Reed Richards and Tony Stark are nowhere to be found, and it's up to Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, to help stop the madness and reclaim New York. In that most basic description, Web of Shadows seemed to have a pretty good setup for a pretty good Spider-Man story but its execution is where it starts to go a bit sideways. The game has a moral choice system, allowing you to make certain choices at certain parts of the story that will pretty much determine how far Spider-Man is willing to go to save the city. But during my second playthrough, this time going the black suit path, I realized that the changes made to the story based on your choices are almost entirely inconsequential outside of the ending, which changes depending on your actions, but I'll get to that in a bit. If you choose to take Black Cat's side early in the story, you still do the same missions as you would for Moon Knight if you rejected her advances. If you decide to take the Black Path after the Vulture fight, only a bit of dialogue changes. Okay. This combined with the repetitive nature of the game's narrative progression made me put it down during my second playthrough without reaching that path's end. If you're gonna do a moral choice system for your narrative, actually have the choices mean something. Look at Mass Effect. Sure, not all of the choices actually mean something, and some of it is just character building for your own version of Commander Shepard through some dialogue that doesn't really mean anything. But there are also many instances where your choices actually do affect the outcome of events that carry over through to the end of the trilogy, in some way, shape, or form. If you're going to have a moral choice system that just changes how a cutscene progresses by only just a single line of dialogue, or just changes where you get the same exact missions from, then why bother? As for the repetition, you're basically going to be doing the same mission over and over for a little bit before you can actually progress with the story. Destroying mech suits, escorting civilians to safety, destroying symbiote pods, it gets annoying. Then there's the gameplay, which honestly is pretty impressive. You can switch between the red and black suits with the click of the analog stick, and their combat styles differ greatly. Red suit is about agility, black suit is about power. There's also an upgrade system where you earn experience points for missions and unlock new moves for each suit independently as well as collect Spidey tokens around the city to level up. Unfortunately, the level up system from acquiring tokens doesn't really seem to do anything. You have more upgrades presented to you as the story progresses and as you unlock the previous tiers, 
And even though your move list gets pretty expansive, once you learn the web strike early on, you're not going to want to use any other attack because it's just so damn effective and the upgrades for it are just so juicy. You can beat pretty much every boss just with this attack. It's friggin' embarrassing. Web swinging is nice, no? That's about all I can say about that. I'd say that Web of Shadows is trying to be Batman Arkham Asylum, but that game didn't come out until the following year. And man, did that game have a much better combat system. The presentation is also a bit pants, with frame rate issues coming and going like mosquitoes in summer, horrific amounts of screen tearing due to lack of V-Sync, and the occasional instance of the game freezing, forcing you to restart the console. The visuals are passable for the time, there's a fair bit of detail and pretty decent animations, but holy fuck does the voice acting hurt to listen to half the time. I'm mainly looking at Spider-Man himself, who's voiced by Mike Vaughn. He's got a voice that's reasonably fitting for the character, but my god does he give a borderline disgraceful performance. Why does everybody talk crap about my costume? It's a classic. It's iconic. Everything's fine. Let's go. You're gonna be fine. I love my present. I love my present. What are you doing to these people? The rest of the voice cast is... okay. Nothing really notable in performance outside of Wolverine, but that's only because he's played by Steve Bloom. How can you not recognize that voice? Alright, spoiler time. Skip to this time frame if you don't want any of the ending spoiled for you. Because the ending actually does change. And nothing else. What was the point of having a moral choice system again? When the symbiote takeover of the city is at its height, Eddie Brock, aka Venom, takes control of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s helicarrier and becomes a multi-headed monstrosity. After you beat him, you can choose to kill Eddie or let him help you in beating the symbiotes. In the good ending, Eddie realizes the error of his ways and commits suicide, defeating the symbiotes in doing so. A week later, Spidey is confronted by Mary Jane and they swing off together. In the bad ending, Spider-Man kills Venom and gains control over NYC with the help of his black suit, with a symbiote-infected black cat by his side. Whereas S.H.I.E.L.D. plans to take them down with a symbiote-infected Wolverine, Jesus Christ. There are a few other epilogues, but considering the hoops you have to jump through to get them and how uneventful they are, they're not really even worth much of a mention. Honestly, Web of Shadows isn't a bad game, but it's certainly not a good game. Repetitive story progression, a lack of incentive to take advantage of your wide range of combat abilities, mediocre presentation and performance, and a branching narrative that doesn't really branch at all left me feeling a bit empty after I put this game down. I wouldn't say to avoid it, but I wouldn't say not to try it. At the very least, you do feel like you are Spider-Man in this game, and switching between the two suits is pretty cool. But mostly everything else is what bogs the experience down for me. But if you do want to try it, I recommend getting the 360 version so you can at least avoid some performance issues. Oh well. At least it's not as bad as The Amazing Spider-Man 2. With that said guys, have a good night and happy gaming.